Hello, so today we're going to be looking at Macduff and looking at what we would say about him if he came up in our essay in our literature paper. So I'm going to go through the four key points I'd say in relation to Macduff and each of my points are colour coded to match these different elements of the Mark scheme. So, how does Shakespeare present the character of Macduff? In my introduction, I need to be making a few key points. That Shakespeare examines the juxtaposing interpretations of masculinity, how he demonstrates the power of betrayal and revenge, and he examines the true cost of patriotism. Macduff and his experiences demonstrate all of these. So, how does Shakespeare present the character of Macduff? There's four points I really simply have to make when it comes to Macduff. Number one, Macduff is loyal to the true king and is instantly suspicious of Macbeth. And I've got the most sacrilegious murder as my quote for that. The second thing I'm going to talk about is that Macduff's decision to flee divides opinion. Is it patriotic duty? Is it short-sighted madness? And I've got the quote from his wife here when, he's, when she says that his flight was madness. Then I'm going to talk about Matt Duff's view of masculinity and how it differs to our traditional understanding of masculinity. And the most key significant quote is for this one, I must also feel it as a man. And finally, I'm going to round off about the last scene that he's in. Matt Beth will not face Matt Duff, he won't fight him, either through acceptance of his own defeat or fear of Matt Duff's power. And the quote I've got for this is, Matt Duff was from his mother's womb, untimely ripped. So, paragraph one, I've got when Matt Duff goes to try and wake up the sleeping Duncan and finds out he's dead and he returns back and he shouts, most sacrilegious murder. So, Matt Duff is loyal to the true King Duncan and he's horrified at the King's death and instantly labels it as treason. So, this conforms to the Jacobean expectations of an honourable gentleman here. He tries to protect Lady Macbeth from the news by asking her to shield her ears and he gives complete respect to the king by allowing people to see the crime rather than try and put words to the fact that the, their hero, their king, the one they respect has been murdered and taken from them. Now where's his key is the adjective sacrilegious. Something that's sacrilegious connotes a crime against God. So Matt Duff recognises the murder of Duncan as a crime against God and, is, and it feels it should be punished as so. So this instantly establishes Matt Duff as a juxtaposition to Matt Beth. Matt Beth is the opposite. His wife is fully involved in what's going on. He defies God and murders the king and he shows Duncan no respect and just chases his own ambition. All three of these bullet points have been juxtaposed through Matt Duff's choice of words and actions already. So the second paragraph is going to be from his wife. His flight was madness. This is when she hears that Matt Duff has fled to England to try and build an army to go and fight Matt Beth. So Shakespeare demonstrates the impossibility of a loyal man's choices, for he fled to England to raise an army to fight the tyrant Macbeth, which would have been his patriotic duty and the responsibility of a medieval soldier who was loyal to his king. But in doing so, he compromises the safety of his wife and his child, so he pays the ultimate sacrifice to protect his country and loses his loved ones, the ones that he cares about. Now the verb flight connotes a swift movement showing how natural and impulsive his decision was to protect Scotland. It was instinct for him that he had to protect his country and his people. But it also connotes to his wife's perception of his cowardice. She feels that he's flying away from his responsibility to her and to his children. Now this appears that a more Jacobean relationship for he's not consulted his wife and he's made decisions on politics and violence on his own without consulting her. So once again we see Matt Duff as the antithesis to Matt Beth and the clear juxtaposition between good and evil. Now we're going on to paragraph 3. So when he hears that his wife and his children have been killed, he's, he's told to dispute it like a man. But um, However, he responds, yes, I will, but I must also feel it as a man. So Matt Duff is devastated to hear the death of his family and he blames himself for their death. He can't accept the news, asking them to say it again and again so he could try and fathom it into his brain. And he also loses control of his emotional balance. He starts saying silly things like calling them chickens and so on. So this devastating reaction juxtaposed with the callousness of Macbeth's murder. He was cold-hearted and thoughtless in his murder of Macduff's family. He didn't care. Macduff cares an also lot. But this also juxtaposed with Macbeth's reaction to the death of his own wife, who tries to be strong, he tries to be resilient. He's clearly devastated when Lady Macbeth dies, but he, he puts a front on of being quite assured and confident to conform to those masculine stereotypes. So this is all about the presentation of masculinity. Lady Macbeth, uh, well, so far, Lady Macbeth has seen masculinity as ambitious and cold-hearted violence, and Macbeth has conformed to this, and he's followed her lead, and he started wielding his authority through tyranny of Scotland. 
However, Matt Duff pre- presents an opposite idea, an alternative view of what masculinity is. And he believes true masculinity is being able to show emotion, having unadulterated love for your family, and having the courage and conviction to avenge them. For he now goes and takes his revenge on Matt Beth. So paragraph four, my final one will be this, that Matt Duff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. And this is when Matt Duff breaks the news to Matt Beth that actually he's been tricked by the witches and Matt Duff was not born of woman but actually ripped to save his life. So the witches have used Matt Duff as a subject to their riddles and trickery. And this is key that Matt Beth's final downfall is at the hand of a wronged noble man and not the supernatural. So villainy will never win amongst humans and on God's earth. So Matt Beth initially refuses to fight Matt Duff when he realises he cannot beat him. This is possibly because he recognises his inferiority against a man who is honourable and true. But remember that Matt Beth was this honourable, true, respectable man at the start. And now he is presented with someone who is a mirror, mirror image of his initial state. He doesn't want to fight him. Or alternatively, he, we could look at the fact that he does actually decide to fight him. So Matt Duff is the catalyst for Matt Beth to find the honour and self-respect inside him that he lost. Even though he kills Macbeth, he also brings out the best in him at his dying moment. Now in terms of language, I'd look at the fact that Matt Duff talks about himself in the third person here, which might imply he no longer identifies himself as himself now that he's lost his family. He doesn't feel like himself, he doesn't even recognise who he is now that he's lost everyone around him he cares. So Macbeth has even taken his identity and his self-respect. I'd also look at the fact that when Matt Duff kills him, he doesn't kill him with the grace and privacy and secrecy that Duncan received on stage or that Lady Macbeth received on stage. He gets dragged back out with his head on a spike, so Macbeth is given the humiliation in death that his tyranny wants.